dealings with the nation of Israel during the tribulation, but we can definitely get help from it. All Scripture is given for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So every verse in the Bible has three applications. There's a um, literal, physical, immediate application. There's a spiritual application. Or mic up, please. Listen down, please. Uh, just like always. And, uh, and then there is a uh, spiritual application, literal application, and prophetic application. Tonight we're going to use it in a spiritual sense. And look here in Luke chapter 21 and verse number um, 34. And take heed to yourselves. He's talking about when all this bad stuff's happening, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfiety and drunkenness and cares of this life, so that that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come upon, come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. Now I want to preach just a few minutes tonight on how to face life in 2017. How to face life. Did you know that suicide statistics have gone through the roof this year and this summer? I heard, I seen the other day in Tennessee, um, double, I think, or two people in Tennessee take their life every day. And here in North Carolina and all of our big cities, people are killing themselves. They say, I can't live. I don't have no will to live. Don't have no reason to live. This girl that just wrecked a car over there the other day uh, had made statements like that on, uh, on her computer, uh, uh, Facebook or something. They said about she didn't want to live, didn't see no reason to be here. And a lot of people just can't face life. I just can't take it no more. Preacher, it's, I just can't face life the way it is. Things are so bad. I, I just caught the, somebody sent me a text, and then I, I saw some, somebody else, I think two people sent it to me, how that they just found at a Walmart parking lot in Texas just this evening uh, 30 people in the back of a tractor-trailer truck. Ten of them was dead that we know of, human trafficking. When this all comes out, this just happened today, and I do not know the details on it. If you do, uh, you can uh, enlighten us a little bit in just a few minutes, but that stuff's going on all in a Walmart parking lot, a, dump, a, a tractor and trailer truck. Nobody realizes it, but inside is a bunch of kids, girls, selling them like dogs, like cattle. And they're now saying that that business, these, these rich, wicked people have found out you can make more money doing that than you can selling drugs. And now it's a $30 billion a year business in America. When anytime there's an event like the Super Bowl or something like that, they take kids in there and sell them. To be. You don't want to think your country's that filthy, do you? And wicked and low down. I mean, we're, everybody's sinners, but that's, that's going into a realm of wickedness that you, we, you just can't even imagine. The little boys and girls, six and seven and eight years old. God, help. That's how sick and pitiful this world's got. How are we going to face life? What's it going to take? Um, what, uh, what, is, what is there? Uh, what does it take for young people today? These kids that are up here, what's it going to be like in 20 years if the Lord don't come? You realize... If you're 17 years old right now, uh, you're, only, you're going to be 30 in the year 2030. Well, that's, a, that's a scary time to think about. You'll be 30 years old, just grown, and at the year 2030. Now, I want to say three or four things about it. First, I'm going to say it takes courage that does not fail. You have to have some courage. You, you really are. You know why kids cut their self? You know why they take a razor blade and cut their cell through here? They say, I, I'm depressed, I'm low. Watch this, adults, watch this. How many of you young people in here tonight know somebody at school or in your, where you live or something that cuts herself? Would you raise your hand, please? Look at that, every one of them, every one of them. Now, if you'd asked that question when I was a teenager, I'd have said, cuts their self? 
I know some people might cut somebody else. I don't know nobody that's dumb enough to cut themselves. But look at this. We're living in a different time. We're living in a different day and age. There's a spirit of evil and wickedness swept over this world tonight that we didn't have uh, the likes of uh, 20, even 20 years ago. I personally believe that when the Internet became available to everybody, the world, I mean, somebody flushed the commode on us, buddy. And we're like this, going down. We're like that right now. No turning back. It's going down. And I'm telling you, ever since the Internet became available, it has become, we have become baptized in filth and wickedness. What's it going to take? It'll take courage. That is unfailing. We have stories in the Bible about courage. David and the giant. You kids, as up here a minute ago, you're David. The world out there is Goliath. Drugs, alcohol, sin, all that stuff you face, that's Goliath. You are David. You know how David killed the giant? David didn't kill the giant with his muscles. Now, I mean, he did not have it. He's only a, 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 a little boy probably in his teens. We, we, we assume that he's probably in his teens when he killed the giant. And David wasn't, as far as we know, wasn't a big muscular fella. Goliath was at least nine and a half foot tall, at least. That means he was, he was way up, I mean, from down there on the floor, like, like this probably, at least. And a man that big, has got some big arms, brother. And a man that big has got, and, and that's our measurement of a cubic. It could possibly have been even taller than that. I mean, he could take anybody in here and break them in half with his bare hands. And they didn't have guns. They didn't have cannons. Uh, they had their bare hands and slingshots and swords and stuff like that. And David came after Goliath one night. And this is what y'all going to have to do. When school starts, this is what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to face that giant. And when you face that giant, you know what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to do just like David did. David said, you come to me with a sword and with a spear. And you're tough and you're big. But I come to you in the name of the Lord our God and our God. And boys and girls, listen. If you'll go to school in the name of the Lord, you can say no to drugs. You can say no to uh, immorality. You can say no to the parties. You can say no uh, to, the, to the gambling and, the, and the, lie, the illegal stuff and all the drug deals and all the shooting up and all the snorting and the sniffing and all that. And if you don't, the devil will make a drug addict out of you. He don't care. He'll make a drunk out of you. He don't care. The only way you can stand up to it is say, listen, you're big, you're mean, you come at me this way, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. Brother Danny ain't going to be there. I'll, I'll be somewhere else when you're at school. Your parents won't be there, but i tell you who will be. The Lord will be. He'll be with you. He'll be with you. And you can go. Brother Jason gave a, a tremendous testimony in here the other night. I'm uh, talking about going to a, a school, public school, carrying his Bible to school. And you know what he said? And it's what every one of y'all need to do. You need to make up your mind. That's the only way you're going to live for God. Settle it. Settle it. Get in this altar and say, all right, I'm going to do this. I ain't going back. I'm not going back. I may trip. I may fall. I may, I may bloody my nose. But I am not going back to that old life. It takes courage that's unfailing. Make up your mind that you ain't going back to that old life. Make up your mind that you are not going. One of the boys the other night gave a testimony. He said, well, one of my buddies called and said uh, they was going to go out and run around tonight. And I thought if I'd have win, I'd probably got in trouble. But uh, they called and said we was having prayer meeting. So I come to this. That's how close, that's how your life can go. Just one time getting in the car with the wrong people. Just one time putting a bottle in your lip. Just one time putting something in your body that don't supposed to be there. You'll become dependent on that stuff for the rest of your life if you're not real, real careful. If you're in here tonight and you got a drug problem, you know what, you, you know what I'd do if I was you? 
I'll tell you what I'd do if I was you. I'd check myself in to rehab. And I'm, I don't necessarily mean a place somewhere, although that can help. I know what I'd do. I'd go to the woods, or I'd go somewhere, and I'd take my, my Bible and a bottle of water, and I'd lay on my face, and I would beg God to take that out of me before it kills me or before it ruins me, and stay there until you get the victory over it and can leave it alone. Say amen right there. That's what I'd do. That's what I'd do. That's what I'd do. Listen, courage that's unfailing. Number two, you got to have Christians for your friends. You got to have Christians for your friends. It all is determined by your friends. It's all, I, I've seen it a hundred times. You always try to be Mr. Cool. You want to be Mr. Cool. You want people to like you. Now, we all do. Everybody wants people to like you. Nobody wants everybody to hate them. I don't want nobody to think I'm a weirdo. A lot of people do, but, uh, you know, that's their problem. I, 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 my mind's made up. I'm going to try to please God. If they think I'm weird, that's, that's their problem. But I, you cannot, you cannot, not, not, not hang around with crazy people and not be crazy. The Bible said, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise. But a companion of fools shall be destroyed. If you hang around people that are doing wrong, you're going to do wrong. I'm telling you, you'll do it, you'll do it, you'll do it. I mean, we see it over and over and over. A girl gets a boyfriend, and he won't come to church. She does real good. He won't come to church. Next thing you know, she's out. How many times? We can write you a book on that stuff. Story after story after story. Listen to me, kids. Listen to me. Pick the right friends to be picked for a friend. I mean, get you a, get you a boyfriend that's, that's fit to shoot or don't get one at all. Amen? Men marry women believing they won't change. And they do. Women marry a man believing he will change. And he won't. That's what you get for being born into this world. That's your future right there. I mean, say, well, I can change him. I can change him. He'll probably change a little bit for the worse. You say, well, boy, she'll never change. She ain't going to look like that very long. That hourglass figure all goes to the bottom. Amen? That's what they say. I'm telling you, brother, you better have more than just lust and looks and, and, and him being cute. You say, boy, he's got that six, he's got that six pack. Yeah, in a few, a few years, I'll have the whole case. And they, said, they said, boy, he's got them pearly whites. Yeah, and I know, he'll be hanging them out on the bedpost every night. It won't be too long. I'm telling you, you better, you better. I, you've heard this story before for all these young people. I'll tell it. Years ago, there's a, a down at the bottom of my driveway, you know, the trailer, not, not the first one, but down there where the mailboxes are, there's a, 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 my uncle lived there until he passed away. His uh, wife, his second wife's daughter lived there. She's 19 years old. Long time ago. I haven't been preaching too long. And one day, she called up at my house, and she, she said, Daddy, Daddy, <laughs> Can you come down here? Please. I said, what is wrong, Debbie? She said, please, please, can you come down here? Please. I said, what's wrong? And, you know, we didn't have a cell phone. She called her house phone. And she, she was terrified. 19 years old. She worked third shift. So she slept during the day. And it's about 12 o'clock in the day. She said, there's a mouse. There's a mouse in here. Will you come down here and kill it? I said, oh, it'd probably be. Like, no. Will you come kill it? I said, all right. I walked down the driveway. Out my, out my driveway. Down there. Went in. That girl, she was up on, on the couch like this. It's in here. It's in here. It's in here. I said, where'd it go? She said, I don't know. So I didn't know where to look. I got the broom, and I went in there, and I, I put it up under the couch, you know, and done like that, you know, and I stuck it in the closet, and I put it about that time. All right, that thing went running across the floor. It went, you know how a little old ratchet went. Ah! It wasn't that big. And I took the broom, broom and El Cabonged him, brother. I, I went, wow, wow, and I hit him. And I, hit, and I opened the door and just swept him out in the yard, and he wasn't even dead. He, he, was, he was laying there going like this. And I knocked him out in the yard. I said, you all right now? She said, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. She liked that heart attack. And I went back up the hill. And while I was walking back up my driveway, a thought 
thereon, and whereby and wherewithal, and withal, and received instruction under the sun, like Solomon did, the wise man. And I thought, going up the driveway, I thought, you know what? The other day I seen a car, a big old Camaro, jacked up. How do you tell me that thing was jacked up like that right there? He's going downhill everywhere he went. And he, he jacked up and he pulled up in that yard. Wow! Wow! Sound like Brother Daytona down there. And she got out of that house and walked up there and got in the car with that thing. Some old scary looking woolly booger looking thing looked like, I mean, looked like 6494. Looked like that microphone stand right there. Had to tease a hair on his leg, get his socks stand up. I mean, he said, and she got in the car. And I walked up the driveway and I thought, you know what, that nut? She screamed at a mouse and got in a car with a wolf. You know what you call that? Dumbness. That's dumb, girls. That's dumb. You say, a tick, a tick, a tick. No, 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 no. A boy, a boy, a boy. A boy, you get something worse than Rocky Mountain spotted fever, sister. Amen. I'm telling you, brother, I mean, it's worse than Lyme's disease or whatever they give you. I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, hear me. You better get some Christians for your friends. I know, I know we laugh and joke about it and everything, but I'm as serious as I can be. Don't date somebody that ain't saved and lives for God. I ask girls, is he saved? Well, I don't know. We've only been dating a few weeks. I haven't asked him yet. You, you're crazy. You're crazy. Your brain has gone to Disney World. You've let your brain fall out of your head because of your lust. And your loneliness, you say, well, it just feels so good. I just, he, just, he just makes me feel so good. Okay, okay, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you better watch out. Number four, three, closeness in the family. Number one, you better have courage and don't fail. Number two, Christians who are friends. Number three, closeness in your family. Uh, nothing will help you live right other than being right with God in church than having a close-knit family together. When it comes right down to it, all you're going to have in this world is your family. You ain't taking your money. You ain't taking your clothes. You ain't taking your car. When it, when it comes down, listen, when that baby is sick down there the uh, other day, I mean, they had a lot of people, and I appreciate y'all. Some of y'all sent cards and had phone calls and even money, and I praise God for that. That's what I was preaching about this morning, being good to my daughter, and I appreciate that. But I'll tell you something, buddy. There's nothing in the world. I, when I walked in that room, it was family. It's family. And I'm telling you, when the chips are down and when everything's going out for money, you know who's going to be there? Your mama, your dad, or your, your brother, or your sister, or somebody in your immediate family. Maybe not true for all of you, but somebody in your family will be there, even if it's not this way, it's this way. Your offspring, kids, and grandkids. I told my girls, I said, now listen, y'all, I took care of y'all when I drug guns all over creation, took care of you. I wiped your snotty nose, and you better wipe mine one of these days if I ever need it. I, I'm telling you to take care. And they will. And you know why? Because we're close as a family. You better keep some closeness in your family. Don't go in there and say, well, I don't care what my mom and daddy says. I'm going to do that. I, I, think, I think one of the saddest things in life is to go through life not having, being mad at your family and people not even speaking to each other, mamas and daddies and stuff like that. That's so sad. I think some of the richest people in the world are people that don't have, don't, can't even get their bills paid every, every, every month but have closeness in their family. They all sit around and laugh and talk and cut up. My family up in West Virginia, that beat anything you've ever seen in your life. I mean, they're about, they're about all crazy and everything, but there's one thing them people do. They stick together. Now, I'm telling you, my Aunt Cooney had 13 kids, and they fought each other and everything all the time, but if you ever mess 
with one of them, the whole blessed crowd would come and get, jump on you. I had a brother-in-law went up there one time. They liked to beat him to death. Uh, they, they said something to somebody. They, they liked to kill him. He went in a bar one night, and he's drunk, running his mouth. Bam! He, he said, these people are crazy. I'm getting out of here. But you know what? They're clannish. They, they stick together, and a family ought to stick together. We stick together. I, when, now, Carrie was uh, 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 got graduated a few years before Chris and Corey, and when Chris and Corey was that high, you know what I told them? I said, you are each other's best friend. She's your best friend. She's your best friend. You understand that? Don't, don't have somebody else as a best friend and leave your sister. Y'all stick together. Y'all stick together. And to this day, they hate each other. No, no they're, they're, they're still. They still do stuff together. They still go places together. They said nothing, don't bother them a bit. All of them go to uh, Dollywood or Gatlinburg or whatever. And you know why? You've got to have closeness in your family. Some of you don't have it, and my heart goes out to you. And if you try and they won't let you, it's not your fault. But if you've, I'm not talking about your situation. I'm talking about some of you brats that you got a good mom and daddy and you're just full of the devil and rebellion and don't want to live right and won't listen to your mom and dad and what they say. That's who I'm talking to. Closeness in the family. Number four, and I'll be through. Confidence in the future. Confidence in the future. They're saying we might have a nuclear holocaust. That crazy little boy, little chubby-faced boy over there in North Korea is demon-possessed. That boy is demon-possessed. You can count on it. He's led by the devil. And our president now, what, you like him or not, he ain't no pushover. Whether he'll do the right thing, I don't know. Well, I don't know. I hope he does. I hope and pray he does. But I'll tell you one thing. This world's at a boiling point right now. This thing could blow a keg any time and will. You mark it down. Three biggest best wars are in the future. We may see one of them before we leave. I don't know. We know there's one right after the rapture when the Antichrist comes in Revelation 6. We know there's another one in Revelation 16, the battle of Armageddon. And we know there's another one in Revelation 19 when the Lord comes back uh, at the end of the millennium, the devil gets out and fire comes down out of heaven and devours them. At least three more big wars are coming. You've got to have some confidence, brother, to face. Young people today say the economy's gone bad. All my friends are got a I, everybody's dying on drugs. We don't have no future. I'm just going to take some pills and end it all. Let me tell you something tonight, young people. You've got something to live for. You've got Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Keep him on your mind. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Keep him on your mind. You've got confidence. The only way we can face the future is say the Lord helped us this far. He's going to help us the rest of the way. Thank God he'll take us on home and get us out of here. Confidence about the future. It's the only way you can do it. Everything else is so depressing. Lord in mercy, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't, you can't have no hope. The economy's bad. Movies are bad. You know what they say in Hollywood? When you say, when people say, y'all shouldn't make bad movies in Hollywood, they say, all we're doing is reflecting what's going on in society. And, that's sort of true and sort of not true. They're dictating what goes on in society. There's, they find a small element that's cutting people's throats and killing people and drug, and then they broadcast it on the big screen and everybody in the country, and that makes people think everybody's like this. They're changing the attitude and worldview of the whole nation. I, I believe the Lord's going to drop that place off in the ocean one of these days. Possibly. I don't know that. Bad time is coming for Hollywood, brother. You mark it down. They'll get on there, them lying hypocrites, and they'll say, well, we're, we're just making movies. There's no scientific proof that, that uh, these movies affect anyone's behavior. And then they turn right around and outlaw cigarette commercials. Because they say one commercial might cause somebody to smoke. Well, if it don't influence nobody's behavior, why you outlaw cigarette commercials? Them stinking 
cowards no good and well. It's corrupting a nation. And they're padding their billfold with it. Don't care. Don't care. Listen, stick with your church. Stick with your family. Stick with this book. Stick with God. And you'll make it. This world is not your friend. It'll chew you up and spit you out. That's how to face life in these next few years in which we live. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Every head bowed.